Hello, today I'm going to show you the Fremencio workout for valve and valve tower with the St. Jude or Abbott now Epic BioCore tissue valve. So this is a, a pulsing valve, it's a super analog valve and you can see that here, it's got a very faint fluoroscopic signature at the base of the analyst and really no commissural pulse uh, to mark at the top so it's not an easy valve to actually uh, work out. To sim unlike the mosaic valve, which is also a pulsing valve, but that one has commercial poles uh, identified as dots on the top. So really the only way to do this, we start is kind of like what we do with a native tower workout. You start with the open red circle, bisect the uh, commissure, and then you put a dot at the bottom on the top left panel, and then you try to do the same thing, bisecting the right sinus and put a dot at the base of the right, and then you do the same thing, rotating the thing counterclockwise and do it in the non. So now you have roughly a end of the plane to work with. So the other thing that I do with the surgical valve workup is to eliminate these aortic Thoughts to basically make sure you have a center line measurement of coaxial to the surgical valve. So I'm going to try to then look at the surgical valve at the base of the epic bar core and try to go down all the way to the base. You can see that here, making sure it's actually bisecting the sinuses because that's really the only way to tell where the, you can see the frame here a little bit of faint signature that is at the base. So you can see that here again, the line down there going all the way at the base. And then finally also to the right cusp. Now, this line here is actually a little squiggly. It's not a plain flat line. So you have to be mindful of that when you do your workup. And you can see that here. We try to do it at the base. But then the other thing that to, that makes it more diff so difficult, this valve, is that you can't really know where the commercial post ends. Now, you do have the Vinny Bapas valve and valve app to give you some guidance but you do want to make this kind of a perpendicular line so that your plane will be really coaxial to the cut plane of the surgical valve. So it looks like this is about as best that we can manage. And so I'm going to click confirm. So you can see now how this will look. And then using the lasso tool, we'll try to basically go around and trace out the inner diameter of the epic valve core valve. Now, the stand ID of the 21, this is a 21 uh, epic valve core valve. It's stand ID is 19, but the true ID is actually 17. So it's gonna be a 20 millimeter balloon expandable valve or a 23 millimeter self-expanding valve. You can see that here, okay, looking at the dimension, it should ideally be a little bit smaller than that but have to be mindful of the anatomy here. So it may actually end up being a little bit smaller. I'm just gonna go inside that white frame. Okay, so this is the analyst, you can say. And then I go to the LVOT view. To measure the LVOT. It's less relevant here because it's a surgical, standard surgical valve, unlike a homograph or a freestyle aortic root stainless valve. So it's less of an issue. 
So you can see that that's the LVOT. And then the STJ, you can see that here, that's the sinuses coming across. So the STJ is roughly like there. And I'm going to basically rotate it such a way you can see the left main take off there. And then do your ruler times two. If you need more time to look at how I do these labeling and measurements, you can uh, certainly go to one of my other video tutorials so that you can see how I do it in a little more slower and systematic manner. This has become a very much a second nature measurement once you get very comfortable with it. This is the left main height. You can see it's a low left main because these are super annular valves and implant above the annulus. You can also see what I did here is to measure the left sinus height. Now I'm gonna measure the sinus or salad dimensions here. You can see a little bit challenging to see you don't have the native leaflet in the way in place, but you can see where the commissures are and you can mark that. And then you can then show measure it this way. So you can see very generous sinuses. So next I'm gonna do the height measurement, which is for now, we we'll say you can see there are no commissures or uh, surgical valve left. So I'm gonna do a custom length measurement by doing right click, I would say it's 13 millimeters in the height of this surgical valve from the annular base that I measure. You can do the same thing on this side. What I'm doing here is I'm drawing a box and the box represents the leaflet being pinned open like a cylinder effect once the surgical valve is replaced with the transcaptor valve inside. And then here you can see I'm doing a waste of 20 because you're gonna use a 20 millimeter balloon expander valve or even with a 23 millimeter self-expanding valve, the waste is gonna be 20 millimeters. So I'm just being a little bit more uh, aggressive with the measurement. You can also put 17 or 18 millimeter here. That's fine too, because that's really what the valve will be expanded. Remember, this is a forcing valve so the top of the stamp post will actually be higher than the actual porcine leaflets themselves. So the risk of risk plane is gonna be actually less, uh, but also because of the valve is mounted internally with the leaflets, you're not gonna expand beyond the stamp ID uh, as, as well. So a 20 millimeter certainly is a more aggressive estimate. But you can see here the valve coordinate distance is plenty the valve actually sits below the sinus tubular junction. So it's really not ne even necessary to look at the risk of coronary obstruction here. It's gonna be low risk. But what you can do is using this view and you can on floral do an LAO cranial view to line up the base of the surgical valve to take out the parallax and then do a semi-selective wood shot to confirm that. So next I'm gonna to go to a one millimeter cut that I usually do. You can see I'm gonna put a 20 millimeter circle there. You could use 18 if you wanna be more conservative. You can see that here. And then I'm gonna basically move up along the slices to one millimeter increments. You can see there's barely any material here for you to see how the surgical valve is positioned. So it's really looked like a native aortic root anatomy workup. So I'm going to go to the STJ here, huge STJ, huge sinuses. Coronary obstruction risk is not going to be an issue here. So because of that, I'm not really going to measure any BTC here. So I'm going to go straight to show the safety measurements on the left cusp. I'm going to go to here by setting the right corner. You can see the right corner takeoff is here. 
and then you can see the right corner right? my sinus height is here this is a pretty much second nature in terms of clicking so i'm going to go back to the analyst you can see this is the ascending aorta You can see it almost you can't see anything here with the hockey puck view because the line of the epic is so faint. The newer generation epic, however, is going to be better in terms of visualization of a fluoroscopy. So, but for now, unfortunately, you're going to have to look at the you know, dots and then rely on that as your kind of neo analyst of the surgical valve. So, when you in, do a valve and valve with this particular valve, you need to use more cine to kind of figure out what the true annular plane is because you'll see this faint line, which I cannot really show you here, unfortunately. But you saw it on the axial view that, that it does exist. So what you do is now you can go to LAO view. Again, this is where you would determine the risk of left main obstruction. And then you can also show the cuss overlap view as well. But you can see here, this is the fluoroscopic signature oh, you see on the epic valve on floral. Let's look at the report here. You can see that now same template, same format as I typically do. Analyst LVOT, you can see it's almost like a native you know, root analysis with the one millimeter size. It's very hard to see the surgical valve in this particular case. So you can see this is how we work out for a epic valve for a valve. So you can save this and share this with your heart team. And then of course you can save this as well. into the session any way you want. So here's the epic biopore valve email tower workup on Fremencio. I hope you find this helpful and we'll see you next time.